the track Golden. Um, yeah. I think this title is very apt because the track is very like, it shimmers, like you can feel it kind of radiating. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell me more about why you chose to name this track Golden? I can, yeah. Um, so this track came about through, um, again, one of my sort of playful, creative sessions. Um, in lockdown, I, I found myself collaborating, not that they'd know it, but collaborating with people um, online. So for instance, through the marching, the Black Lives Matter, I found myself accompanying some of the choirs that were marching through the seat, streets and posting those on, on Twitter. Um, and there was one glorious moment, um, not connected to Black Lives Matter, but in lockdown where a group of dancers got together in Los Angeles and they danced in a car park, um, some of whom were trained, others were not, and, but they're all given an equal platform to, to, to basically to show their wares. And then around this impromptu um, theatre, car park theatre, were cars with their headlights on that provided the spotlights for these dancers. So you had these hip hop dancers, uh, people of slightly sort of advanced years, moving beautifully, other younger people, all given this platform. And it was just incredible, so beautiful. Um, and I improvised something to it, improvised some music and then posted that later. And the, and I remember thinking back, thinking, do you know what, I really just felt that there was something of worth um, in that moment, in that music. So I returned to it and developed this piece, Golden. So the Golden, uh, really, the title came from the stage, the moment, which I felt was so rich and so thrilling. Uh, but it also came from the lights, these, the custom lighting, which was hitting the car park at this time. Um, so that's where the title came from. That's really interesting. That's not what I expected, like, whatsoever, but I really like that. Um, the strings are really prominent in this track. How was writing this arrangement? Well, it was a curious arrangement. Um, and not that when I write orchestrally, I write very, um, so everything, when I say everything comes at one, I, I mean everything. So when I write a piece of music, the orchestration comes Im immediately. So it's a race again, I have to write really quickly, so I'm writing it down as I'm hearing it. And, um, and then what I do is I send it to my copywriter, Tom Curran, who is brilliant. And because it's so fast, he makes it neat and tidy. And um, he is, and, and when I talk about having this collection of people that I work with, um, who are, and I, I'm so keen to, to mention them, is because I value their creativity and what they do so much. Um, Tom Curran is one of my key collaborators. Um, and uh, so he does that with me. And um, so he's a co-orchestrator on, on this album project. Um, but it's, the orchestration is an instrument in itself, um, not just the playing of it, but the writing of it, because the voicing and the waiting within the, those orchestral textures is very key. But for this one, because it was so fast, what I wrote is the individual lines of every part, and I sent it to Tom, and I said, now, Tom, I'd like you to orchestrate that, which is not how I normally work. Normally, I do everything, and I send it to Tom, and we do it together. But for this one, I said, orchestrate that. And he did it, and this is what I got back, and uh, which is where he used all the lines, all of the waiting, and all the instrumentations. And then, um, so this was, in a sense, uh, his his, his arrangement of that and uh, it, it was I was absolutely delighted and, and again when we recorded this with the Viennese orchestra we um, he came down with me to real world um, we worked with the um, the orchestra remotely uh, and it was just such a it's it's amazing to hear fantastic musicians bring your music to life and uh, and you use the word shimmer, and that's exactly what I wanted this track to do. I wanted it to shimmer, and and I wanted people to just feel uplifted when they when they listen to this piece of music. So you know, you know these sort of undulating dynamics, which which go, which progress and and are amplified, 
as the piece progresses. That's uh, they're supposed. Well, I wanted them to feel immersive, and and hopefully that's what that's what they are. I think it absolutely is. And the other thing is, it kind of is great that you paint an image and, it, and understanding what that image is. You, I can totally see it because it's kind of like the it's quite pared back at the beginning and then. It, bursts into colour like through the middle like yeah. and then kind of comes back again so it's just like this moment in time that you've captured. Well I'm really pleased to hear that and and we again with with the I remember when I was this is going off at somewhat of a tangent so forgive me um, again when in one of my uh, previous um, sort of activities. I remember when I used to teach music technology, which I loved, um, A-level music technology, and, I, and, a, and a friend of mine, Simon Franklin, um, who the Hollywood composer Simon Franklin, came in to showcase to, his, to my students his work on the Spider-Man movies. So he works on the Spider-Man movies and, and he um, uh, basically did the, the the orchestrations and the and he was showcasing to all the students can, i mean how cool was this right to all the a-level students this is what i did this is the movie and this is where spider-man jumps on here and look here's all the technology that i put and this was what underpins the orchestra can you see how that works so the orchestra playing this is what underpins and 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 i just remember sitting and thinking gosh this is so cool this is so brilliant and in a lot of my work i do exactly that i you will hear programming well, you might sense depth and feet, depth of field, and you might sense that it's big and sonorous, but you miss because there's more there. But I never want to hit people so they feel, oh, okay, he's doing this there, and oh, gosh, that isn't there. I want them to just have a sense of it. So with the orchestra, there's subtle programming that we spend a lot of time on, Jonas and I, working to, to just invite the listener to step inside and to feel that this piece is enveloped all around them. Um, so there is that there's a sense of 360 orchestration that encompasses the programming as well. And um, uh, it's, you know, for the piece to really step alive and to step into this golden light. <laughs> 